Paddy Andrews, Dublin have won their 11th provincial title in a row on a scoreline of 20 points to 1-9 against Kildare. This is the third time you've watched Dublin in action so far this year for off the ball. Have you seen major improvements? Um, look, I, I think today was kind of just cruise control really for Dublin. They, they probably never really got out of third gear. I think the way Kildare set up probably played into that a bit as well. It was quite defensive from them and look, Dublin did what they do. They, they, they kind of got their noses in front and then would keep the ball for, for long periods of play. Maybe something for, for Desi Farrell to look at is kind of, is there a big in, impact coming off the bench? No goals today. They didn't really look like scoring a goal either. So, so a couple of things, like I say, relatively comfortable win, but definitely a couple of things for Desi to, to look forward to uh, over the next two weeks in preparation for Mayo. We'll start with the good. Um, in the third quarter this time, against Mead, I was, I've been talking about Mead's third quarter for a long time now, but against Mead, Dublin let control of the game go. There were four points up at half time and they come out in the second half. Daniel Flynn landed a bomb on his right foot to put a three points between the teams. Dublin went on to score six of their next seven points. What impressed you over that third quarter? Yeah, look, I, I thought some of the key plays. I thought James McCarthy had an excellent game around midfield. Dublin put a huge pressure on, on, on Mark Donnellan's kickouts, and, and that really gave them a platform as well. But Niall Scully kicked two points. Kieran Kilkenny really came in, came to the fore at that point. Because, look, for, for, for Dublin, it was probably like as quiet a game as you'll see from Brian Fenton and Conor Callaghan, but that's the, the beauty of Dublin. That other guys can step up, like Kilkenny, like James McCarthy. Uh, and they just did, they took control of that game and even after Daniel Flynn's goal and you think, Jesus, there might be a bounce in the last 10 minutes from Kildare, Dublin just took this thing out of the game again, kept possession and worked the ball for, for a couple of Cormac Costello points as well. So, look, it was a very kind of street smart uh, game by Dublin if it wasn't the most spectacular. The quiet performances by Conor Callaghan and Brian Fenton are probably going to come under the spotlight over the next two weeks before the Mayo game. 13 days now till the All-Ireland semi-final against Mayo. Why, why aren't they clicking or why aren't they in flying form in a provincial final? Um, look, I, I just think you know, more so than David Clifford last week for Kerry. It's, you have such high standards for, for, for these guys, particularly Fenton and, and Con, two, two of the greatest players Dublin have ever had. So, look, a little bit quiet today, but I, I'd have no doubt or no worries about their form uh, co coming into the Mayo game in 13 days' time. And like I say, for Dublin as a whole, they, they've kind of cruised through not just the Leinster Championship probably the whole season so far to date they haven't really been tested or, or had to get out of third gear that is definitely not going to be the case uh, in the all Ireland semi-final against Mayo you've seen I was really really impressed with Mayo uh, in their win over Galway the athleticism the energy the running game Dublin are going to have to up their intensity levels for that game and, and look they're so experienced they know that themselves and uh, and look, I think everyone's just looking forward to what should be two brilliant All Ireland semi finals between the four best teams. We were speaking during the game, and, and in the previous 11 provincial titles that Dublin have won, they've always been favourites, but not always, but pretty much been favourites going into them over the last couple of years. Going into an All Ireland semi final or, or Super 8s or whatever way it was, it never really felt like Dublin were undercooked in any of those games. But when we're seeing the likes of Khan and maybe Fenton not hitting the heights that they previously hit, hit before, we're seeing that uncharacteristic third quarter last week. How can Dublin use the next 13 days now to get themselves ready? Oh, look, look that's where the experience comes in. Like, even though it's Desi Farrell and Mick Alvin's only their second year in charge, a lot of those players, they've been there, they've done it, they, they know the crack. So over the next 13 days, it'll just be review the game today. OK, what were the positives? There's, there's definitely a couple of areas that they like to work on. But also, they, they know the challenge of Mayo as well. You know, they played each other so often over the last number of years, including last year's All Ireland final. Um, and the, they'll have total respect for what Mayo are going to bring to the table. We've seen it. It was the most James Horan Mayo performance from them against Galway. All action, all energy. And, and look, anytime Dublin play Mayo, it is a bruising encounter. You're going to have it very, very physical. It puts big demands on it. And, and that's where guys like James McCarthy, Brian Fenton, and all these fellas. Their experience will come in. They'll be ready to go in 13 days' time, despite, like say, if it's perceived a little bit quieter from Fenton and Khan today, but like say, they know exactly what's going to be required in, in two weeks' time. On the football pod of Andy Moran a couple of weeks ago, you were speaking about being on the Dublin B team in training matches in the build-up to big games and trying to force your way onto the team, trying to do whatever you could to make it onto the starting 15. We've heard about Bernard Brogan and his book and the battles he had to try and make it back in 2019. Do those training matches happen, those ferocious training games, do they happen over the next two weeks or are they happening earlier in the season or is, is that a chance for Dublin to set the tone over the next two weeks in those internal games? 
Oh, look, absolutely. I have no doubt. I'd say next weekend it'll be they'll play a full game. Um, and look, that it's important because guys need to put their hand up and, and, and try and make an impact off the bench. And, and I suppose that's been challenged for, for Dublin over the last couple of weeks. Is the depth of the squad the same as it was maybe four or five years ago? Obviously, there's been a huge turnover in, in terms of players moving on and things like that. But that is something. If you look at the impact Mayo got off their bench, you look at what the impact the Kerry subs made last week as well in their Munster final. Dublin will be looking for that, and that's over the next two weeks, guys are going to have to put their hand up in training, like Colin Basquale, like Sean Bugler coming on today. If Dublin are going to win the All Ireland, you know they are going to need impact from from the bench, and we probably haven't seen as much of that as as Dublin would have hoped over the last uh, three games in the Leinster Championship. We'll be previewing Dublin Mayo and Kerry thrown in depth on the football pod Andy Moran over the next two Wednesdays and Tuesdays. Um, I just forgot myself, but it's a Tuesday now that the podcast is coming out first on the OTB Sports app. Get a wee plug in there. Let's talk about Kildare for a minute. We we were here for the, the Lancer semi-final double header and West Mead kicked an awful lot of wides that day, had a couple of goal chances. Kildare set up well defensively today, but they conceded the kick out. Now, Jack O'Connor said it was a necessary of two evils. Is any team ever going to beat Dublin by conceding the kickout? I, I don't think so. And, and look, we touched on it on the pod earlier on this week when you make a case for Kildare and, and how can they possibly win this game. If you're going to beat Dublin, you have to be brave. And, and you look at the teams that have, have, have done well, like, like Mayo over the years, despite not getting over the line, they push Dublin to the pin of their collar every time. And, and you do that, but you have to be brave. You have to push up on, on, on with Stevens' kickouts or Evan Comfort's today. Yeah, and, and it does. I understand what Jack O'Connor means that by doing that, you might have to leave yourself one on one with Conor Callahan down the other end of the pitch. But that's the risk you have to take. You've got to back your defenders to win their individual battles, and you've got to push up and try and take Dublin out of their comfort zone. And look, I, 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 you've seen what Mead did in the qu- third quarter two weeks ago. They just threw caution to the wind. They were 11 points down, so they, they pushed up in the kickouts. They really got in Dublin's face. And, and nearly didn't show them any respect and that's ultimately what you're going to have to do if you give Dublin the ball they're too good and too experienced a team they're not going to just kick it back to you you've seen they go through these passes of play for three, four minutes of keeping the ball that drains so much any energy for the opposition and, and, and look to be honest Kildare yes they were, they were solid today far more solid than they were against Westmead but ultimately with ten minutes in you could just see they're, they're going to struggle to get the scores on the board and they only get 1-9 Look, that, that's the challenge. Yes, they, they're a little bit solid defensively, but, but they're taken away from the attacking game plan. I just don't think you can give Dublin the ball and expect to, to hurt them on the counter attack. Just think they're too good and too experienced a team. You've got to try and push up and get in their face. And look, in two weeks' time, that's exactly what James Horn and Mayor are going to do. He, he knows the team inside out, so that's why it should be far more interesting in two weeks. I'd say. In terms of Kildare's attacking game plan. Johnny Cooper sat back in a sweeper role for much of the first half in front of Daniel Flynn and Jimmy Highland. Highland scored a couple of lovely points. He kicked four overall. Daniel Flynn ended up at 1-2. Much like the semi-final, he had moments. That wonder goal again. Let's talk about Kildare's drop short, like the shots. There must have been six to drop short. There were a couple of wides. The groans coming out of every part of the stadium when Kildare dropped another ball short was just... It was a killer for them. Can I, is it a little old school t- to wonder or to even ask... Is it not worth dropping that ball into the square? Is it not worth just trying to get a flick on? I, I asked Jack O'Connor it in the post-match interview, and he said the man that they usually play inside like that is Kevin Feely, and they were missing him today. Daniel Flynn prefers to receive the ball up front. But it, like, what would you have done with Dublin? Would you have ever thrown Ono Gower in there? Would you have ever tried to hang in around the square for a ball dropping? Well, look, it's totally dependent on, on the way you're, you're set up. And for Kildare, look, we touched on it. For them to win this game, everything needed to go right so there was obviously a big blow losing Kevin Feely and Owen Doyle beforehand we, we expected that we knew they were going to be up against it if they were going to have any chance today Daniel Flynn needed to not just have one moment he needed, needed to dominate the game and he, he probably didn't despite scoring like, an absolutely spectacular goal like, Neil Flynn only scored a point was taken off he's a key scorer for them as well Jimmy Hyland was really, four points in the first half including two for play he was taken out of the game in the second half and, and, and four Kildare like, for them to win that game, everything needed to go right. They couldn't afford. They needed to shoot the lights out. And, and like I say, like Ben McCormick, I think had four misses himself in the first half. It's just they were always, always got to be up against because they're not the way they set up. They weren't going to get many chances. Everyone they got, they had to nail it, and they, they just couldn't do that in the second half. And look, the game was kind of petering out until Daniel Flynn got that goal. And you thought they might get a kick out of it, but 
that's where Dublin's experience came in and, and, and just killed the game off. But for Kildare, it's disappointing for them because you feel like they didn't really fire a shot. Um, what a couple of long balls in if Kevin Feely was there. What, look, they probably could have tried something different because they, they were just struggling for scores right from the get-go, really. Two last quick questions, Paddy. Um, Dublin got about 45-odd minutes into John Small today before he was taken off for Owen Merchant. Uh, on, a, on a blood substitution and Merchant stayed on for the rest of the match two massive players that are back from Dublin how did you think the two of them got on today? Yeah look it's very important for them both to get back like, particularly we're talking about that the depth of the Dublin squad and look, it, it, they weren't really tested throughout the Leinster Championship but if Dublin are going to win the All-Ireland and get over Mayo in two weeks time John Small and Owen Merchant are needed there you've seen the energy Owen Merchant brings John Small as well, they'd be happy. He had a long layoff, so, so for him to get 40 minutes in, and hopefully it's just a, a knock and it's nothing too serious. He's a huge man marker in that Dublin defence, particularly if you're looking at Mayo in two weeks' time. You'd imagine Kevin McLaughlin's probably done enough to start, and, and he'll be a key link player. John Small has marked him before, uh, it could be on Dermot O'Connor. He's a key, key leader in that defence. So, so for Desi Farrell and Dublin supporters, it was brilliant to see those two guys back out on the pitch again. And it just gives them more options. Obviously, Robbie McDade is still out. I mean, he wasn't in the squad today. It looks like he's probably a little bit longer term. But, but for the lads, they'll have two key roles in two weeks' time. So great to see them back out on the pitch today. Last question. Dublin got their shooting boots on much more in the second half. But in the first half, saw a couple of block shots, a couple of un uncharacteristic wides. As a forward, and as somebody who's been part of that culture in the Dublin squad over the last decade, like, is there an element of over-analyzing it as a forward? Like, what should they do over the next 13 days to make sure they're on form? No, I, I think the, the, the big, biggest thing to look at are whether the right options. And that's it. Like, look, you, can, you can have a bad, a bad execution every once in a while, but I, th I think the options were, were probably right. They weren't forcing the shots. It was just, again, and we've seen it over the last couple of weeks in the Leicester a little bit uncharacteristic sloppiness like Paddy Small getting blocked down, Khan dropping one short. It's like it's it's so rare that, that, that when you see it, it stands out. But but for them, I th look, I think they, they were the right options. It was just poor execution, and and the guys will definitely be sharpening the axe over the next two weeks um, because they're going to need to nail those options. They're not going to be as much time on the ball. Mayo are going to be in Dublin's face, so you've got to be really, really clinical. But look, they still scored 20 points today. L little drawback, there was no real goal chances, but look, I think Costello, Kieran, Dean Rock, racking up scores and, and, and that's only a good step for, for two weeks time apart from the groundskeepers and the seagulls were two of the last here in Crow Park are you looking forward to the All-Ireland quarter or semi-final in two weeks time oh yeah I mean, look, look you, you, I think both semi-finals are going to be absolutely brilliant games we've been crying out for it we're talking about everyone's probably waiting for, the, for these games to come along and if you look over the course of the season I think it's the four best teams like, like there's, there's no two ways about it so you've got the four best teams in the semi-finals everything to look forward to and I know a lot of people are, are already kind of tipping that it'll be Dublin and Kerry in an All-Ireland final but look I think Tyrone have huge momentum behind them and after coming through a really tough Ulster Championship and also the boost Mayo will have gotten from that second half performance against Galway they'll come in confident they do not fear playing Dublin um, so James Horn will have those guys ready I think they'll be two brilliant brilliant games and, and, and for everyone to look forward to Paddy Andrews thank you very much that's Dublin Leinster Champions 2021 they'll play Mayo next Saturday Saturday week the 14th of August Dublin Kerry will play Tyrone in the second semi-final Paddy we'll catch up with Andy Moran on the football pod later this week